Hello, and welcome to another episode of the OrthoWire podcast. Today, we're going to be working on the RPE, the Rapid Paddle Tool Expander. So, hope you uh, get some benefit out of this. I was asked by one of the paid subscribers on uh, designerretainer.com to do an RPE, uh, so I thought, well, I had an RPE coming up, I'll record it. Uh, did it during the day, so I'm having to do a voiceover now because I didn't want to talk while everybody was working. People think I was talking to myself. So I'm doing it now, so if it sounds a little disconnected, that's why. As you can see, I'm, I'm uh, cleaning it up, uh, removing bubbles, uh, removing stone from the lingual of the bands. Uh, anywhere where wires go, I'll clean it up and, uh, and remove these little uh, attachments on the inside uh, with a, with a uh, stone. So here's a stone, uh, and I just lightly scuff it, try to knock down that little attachment thing. Be very careful you don't grind a hole into this. It's very hard to fill in a hole with, with solder, so just be real careful. You have to kind of uh, visualize where your solder joint's going to be and clear an area for it. So if you like small solder joints, you don't have to clear very much. But if you're like me and you like to cover the whole thing with solder, then I like to clear as much away from the band, stone-wise, away from the band as possible before I solder and, and before I bend the wires. A good way to visualize visualize the where your screw is going to go is I take a pencil and I like to mark the midline of, of the cast. Uh, so I get my RPE right in the middle. Now... Most of the time, oh, I'm also marking where the wires go also, but be wary. You are working on patients before they get braces on, and sometimes the midline's way off, so you just got to do the best you can. Here I realize that uh, I don't need wires there, <laughs> and you'll see in a minute. It's always good to read the script first. Uh, I noticed that on the drawing that the doctor didn't draw the, he usually does, draw the lines to the canines, but uh, this one he didn't, so obviously he doesn't want to engage the canines. Most likely they are uh, not erupting yet. What I use is a forestident screw, a 10 millimeter screw, and uh, I think some people call it jack screws. But I like these because the, the bars are perpendicular to the screws. I think it fits a lot nicer in the palette, and uh, the way they laser weld them on the bottom uh, makes it makes the arms really really strong. They're they're, they're not poking out the ends. They're, there's one solid wire going all the way through, and so as you can see in this, uh, it fits real good in the in the pallet. Okay, so the wire I'm using is 040 wire. Uh, that's just the standard for an RPE. And what I do is I just like to hold it in place, mark my bends and then uh, go in and, and bend it. I like to adapt my wires to really secure those teeth as they're getting expanded out so none of them rotate or anything. Uh, every once in a while you'll get a doctor that wants just straight wires and, and that's, a, that's a special request that I get sometimes. And so all I'm doing now is just adapting the wire. This is a pretty easy wire to bend. And again, remember I'm not going where the canines are. Again, look, there's no canine on that one. Alright, so now after I make that bend around that bicuspid, uh, this is something weird that I kind of do. I don't know if it's weird, but I, I'm i trying to get the right spot. What I do is I make a vertical bend straight up out of the mouth, and that becomes my handle for the wire, just for placement reasons. I cut it off later after we make the RPE, or my, my metal guy does. I, I tell him just cut it where, where it bends up and that see how I'm holding it okay here's me showing you how I use that little handle thing uh, again y'all don't have to use it. it I just found it was really hard to hold those little wires when it's just one little piece sometimes now I'm gonna go grind it uh, using that stone come back and you'll see it, it's it's ground in, in this scene uh, place a little bit of sticky wax a little closer to the molar than to the bicuspid just for just for the reasons of getting it out of the way of soldering the best I can. So let that set and uh, we'll work on the other side.
Okay, uh, waxing's done for that side. We've got the wires and the spots where I want them. I like to do those wires first and then bend the RPE around the wires. So, RPE's next. Okay, rule number one on placing the RPE. The arrow goes toward the back of the mouth all the time. Uh, it, it is set in stone. You've got to get that arrow to the back of the mouth just because it's easier for the patient or the patient's parent to activate this thing. Uh, just trust me on this one. Okay, to make my wire bending of the RPE easier, I like to make a matrix, uh, an index, I, I guess you would. I make mine out of wax. It's just easier. I used to make it out of stone, and I would mix up a little bit of stone in the palm of my hand, put it in the roof of the mouth, and then place the screw in the stone while it's still wet. And then after the stone sets up, you can take the RPE out, and you've got a perfect index of the bottom of the screw. So your screw goes to the same exact spot every single time when you're bending the wires. Uh, I've modified the method to a little bit quicker method. I use wax. Uh, since I'm using a hydroflux well, soldering unit, uh, I don't have to worry about the wax melting all over the place and getting everywhere. So as you can see, I'm, I'm checking the placement of the screw. Uh, now I'm going to melt the top of the wax, and I'm going to push the screw into the melted wax and line it up with the midline that I drew earlier and uh, oop, get that back on there all right I'm gonna put some melted wax kinda of fill in some gaps here uh, and, and mainly what you the only reason for this is just to make an index so that the bottom of the screw kinda of snaps into place every time you make a bend so that if you make a bend too far and it doesn't seat all the way down to the matrix, you know the index, you know that you made your bend too far. Here's a little tool that I use. Uh, it's a arm bending device thing. You can get it at most orthodontic lab suppliers. And it just makes it easier bending these uh, heavier gauge wires that the RPEs come in. And you don't have to break your pliers trying to do this or hurt your fingers. It's like a cheater bar, I guess. Uh, so you can bend it with your hands. Uh, mainly what I'm doing right now is just bending the wires out of the way. Uh, most likely I think I'm going to reset the uh, the index. I didn't like where it was because the arms were hitting the roof of the mouth. Now you're not going to want the wires to hit the roof of the mouth on the RPE. Uh, as If you can keep yourself from doing that, the patient will thank you. Because as you expand this, the wires will bend and it will push the roof of the mouth and, and be kind of uncomfortable. So I try to get the wires off of the roof of the mouth as I'm setting this index so that I have a good starting point when I start uh, contouring these wires to their solder joint positions. So I'm checking the uh, perpendicular and parallel uh, placement of the screw, making sure it's you want it to, want it to be exactly parallel with the uh, midline and perpendicular to the molars. Here's a good shot of the matrix, uh, or the index, I keep saying matrix, index that I made and the bottom, how it matches the bottom, and how this thing will kind of, uh, I hate to use the word snap in there, but you can feel it, you know, set, engage in there. And so now we start contouring the RPE wires to solder joints. All right, so I'm just torquing these wires, uh, getting them. I'm aiming toward the distal part of that band right there and right there. Uh, the 040 wires we bent previously are at the mesial part of the band, and these will be at the distal part of that solder joint. Uh, and uh, so I, it's just be a matter of using this little wire bending tool and getting these to where they hit right at that, right at that point. Now you want this to contour the roof of the mouth. Not touch the roof of the mouth, but get maybe a millimeter or half a millimeter to a millimeter off of the roof of the mouth. Um, and that, that'll give it some uh, flex. So when it gets activated, it'll have a little room to, to expand it without hitting the roof of the mouth. And then it, if you're contouring it, it's not gonna be sticking out so far that it's gonna get in the way of their tongue or, or speech or eating, which it will anyway just the nature 
nature of the beast of the appliance. You know, so it's it, it's an in between. It's a give take. So I, what I'm doing here is just trying to yeah. contour it, trying to get them uh, exactly where I think they should go. Once I get the wire where where I think it needs to be, I'll mark it where I'm going to cut it. I'll always mark it where I'm going to cut it because I never trust myself. If you cut these arms too short, you're well, you're screwed. Uh, pun intended. Because uh, <laughs> the arms are too short, it won't reach the solder joint. You got to start over with a whole brand new screw. Some of these things run, you know, 18 bucks a screw, so you do not want to screw these things up. More more puns in, intended. You see how, uh, you'll see on my right index finger, I keep tapping the screw, uh, making sure it fits in that index, uh, that there's no wobble in it, there's no play. If it fits all the way in there, and the wires touch where they're supposed to, we're perfect. If, if the wires aren't touching and it doesn't fit in there, something's wrong, you got to go back and fix something. So you'll, you'll see me tap that screw a little bit um, every now and then to make sure that it's, it's all the way in the index before I move on to the next stage. Okay, here's a good freeze frame of what I'm trying to achieve. The wire contouring the, the roof of the mouth and then bending, going perpendicular into the band. And that gives you uh, the best force from expansion because the expansion will go directly into that molar instead of trying to push on it from the side if you don't if you bend the wire from the side. Still works, but the transfer of force is a lot better if you bend it and go directly into the band. Okay, now we're working on the front bars, the, the front arms of the RPE. I like to do them in pairs. Either start with the front two and then do the back or start with the back two and do the front. I find that that just works easier for me, easier for me to uh, adjust and, and keep up. So once I get the back one set, I cut them, uh, I don't mess with them again, and then I go to the front. And if I make any bend that causes the back ones to lift off or the screw not to go all the way in the index, I know I've gone too far. And, need, and I need to back up. I tend to bend the front arms to lay on top of the wires. I know I, I told you the back ones need to go directly into the band. You can do that on the front also, but I tend to just lay them on top uh, and then make my mark for where I'm going to cut it. And then I'll use my stone and grind it into place where it fits more snugly uh, and it's not sitting on top. If it sits on top, it's okay. Your solder joint's just going to be a little thicker there. Uh, but if you can get it to where it touches perpendicular to the wire exactly, make sure it touches, you're, you're going to have a pretty strong solder joint. Okay, looks like I got this ready to go, ready to go and uh, grind the ends down. Always grind where the uh, solder joint is going to be. That way it, it adds a little bit of a mechanical retention. Uh, clean off all the, my little marks from my fingers and then uh, grind off the top layer of all the way around. And notice I'll, I'll grind the ends and the bottom and the tops and, and uh, just make sure that there's enough scuffing there to cause a good... Okay, this is where the uh, index comes in handy again. So you just drop it into place. As long as it sits into the index, you know, uh, everything's good. Your wire bending's good. Your grinding is good. Uh, and you just check all your joints. Oh, looks like I'm not hitting on that side. And looks like it was not in the index already. All the way. So, got it in the index. I'm ready to uh, wax it down. Get it ready to go. Scratch that. Looks like I'm not ready to go. Um, decided to make some last minute adjustments. Uh, this, is, this is the last call for adjustments. Once you solder it, you cannot adjust anymore. So, it's ready to go. I take it off the model holder and uh, I'm still doing some more adjustments. Hold on. Okay, finally. Uh, I guess I, I finally got happy with the way it looked. Add some sticky wax to the wires so they don't shift around on you while you're uh, soldering. Uh, usually they don't shift around, but just in case I like to have some sticky wax in there. Uh, I try to put it down low toward the screw, uh, away from the solder joint. That, Wax has a tendency to, when it gets heat up, jumps into your solder joint that you're trying to do and uh, causes a lot of contamination and stuff. So here we go. We are ready to go for soldering.
Okay, that's all done. Uh, time to uh, I take it to the back, and we have a steam cleaner, and we are going to steam all this junk off. So all that wax and stuff that was underneath, as you can see, there's a space there now, which is good, uh, so that food can pass and won't get stuck. Uh, it will get stuck, but it'll be easier to clean. I'm going to go ahead and clip off these little uh, vertical bins, uh, and then I'll just decide to, I'll show you how I take these off. Usually this goes a little quicker, uh, and I just try to get my blade up underneath the band and try to pop that band with the tooth off. Uh, if you try to get the band to come out by itself, sometimes you, you bend the band pretty good. And I just try to clean out the, uh, the stone teeth. You can grind this out too, and, and it, it's just as fast. You have a tendency to grind on the band, but you can always fit it back on even though the teeth, the molars aren't there anymore because there will always be a band groove a ring, a, a stone ring around there. So, there you go. There, that is the uh, finished appliance. It's ready. Uh, Pre-finished appliance. It's ready to be finished. At this point now, I need to add a little solder there. Uh, but there you go. That is doing an RPE from start to finish, and that's it. Thanks. To see the uncut and unedited version of this video, be sure and go to designerretainer.com uh, for ten dollars a month. You get the unedited version and you won't miss a single bend. Thanks.